So the program is called Teach, um, which is spelled T-E and then bracket A, close bracket C-H. So if you take the A out, then it's tech, um, which it's based on kind of like a, a programming, uh, a way that programming language often use brackets. Um, and uh, the company's called Pingwa, uh, which means play or game in Inoptitude. And so kind of that's the idea of kind of is those two things together. So we teach tech to people um, through, uh, in Nunavut communities specifically, although we have started to spread to Southern Ontario as well, or so to Northern Ontario. And um, and we do it in a way that's like, is, is fun and is rooted in play and is rooted in kind of games. And so we teach computer science, we teach uh, digital literacy of kind of all sorts, as well as digital art. And the kind of the core goal of the program is to move people from consumers of technology to creators of technology. So the, w the way we run the program uh, is we go into a community uh, for five days. And the first two days, kind of one of the major focuses of the program is sustainability. And so the, for the first two days, we work with kids who are like between like 16 and 25, roughly, and, and teach them how to teach our curriculum. And then for Wednesday to Friday of that week, the final three days, we bring in younger kids and kind of mentor these older kids through that pro uh, through the process of teaching our curriculum. Um, the, you know, the program itself, uh, like I said, it teaches everything from the basics of programming to digital art to kind of uh, to kind of uh, 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 tech history and tech safety and that type of thing. And it's it's rooted in kind of playing games. So we try to never have kids in front of a computer for more than 45 minutes at a time before we kind of break it up and play a game and do something else. So that's the basics. Um, we are right now in the process of developing 100 modules, 100 pieces of curriculum uh, that, that support this program. And they're, they're all over the place. So we've done stuff in Minecraft. We've done, uh, we do kind of introduction to programming. We do more advanced programming. We do digital arts. So uh, from pixel art to 3D modeling. Um, we try to just provide like a, a really like wide suite of tools so that we, um, because the program's still early, we're still trying to figure out like what are kids gravitating towards, what is completely a dud, and that way we can we can uh, focus on the on mm -hmm. the positive things. Yeah. So the company started in 2012 in Pangnutong, Um uh, and and the program, which at the time we called Code Club, began shortly after that, and so. Uh, it, it, we do a bunch of different things. We we try, we view it as kind of like um, a life cycle of of development. So we can we can start with tech education, and then we we run an internship program, so we can help people get their first job. We can help people with scholarships into schools, um, and then uh, we can, we also have an app development division, and so we we can help with actually releasing um, someone's creation uh, to the public. Um, and so all of that said. Um, that's that's kind of that's kind of the, the goal of both the program and the company itself. Um, so starting in 2012, we're, we you know we were really we were well funded this year through a program called CanCode that the federal government created, um, which has allowed us to really spread out. Um, and so it's involved a bunch of different things. We've gone to I think about 17 communities this year so far, as well as opening this maker space. Well, I would say the biggest goal of this program is sustainability. Um, kind of you know the history of Nunavut uh, education here has been. Um, often, often white people coming in with with these programs and then leaving also with those programs and taking taking kind of all of the things needed to continue that program. So we're we're trying to uh, not do that. One of the ways we do that is through a program called Computers for Schools that we administer for Nunavut. Um, so through the federal government, through refurbished federal government computers, we're actually able to provide free laptops to every single participant of the Teach program. Um, we you know in any one year are giving away between like three to four hundred laptops. Uh, they come preloaded with all of our curriculum, with all the tools that you need to run them, so that they can exist without the internet. If if that is if that's an issue for someone, um, and kind of allow someone to keep their learning going beyond the one week that we're in their community. Um, we try to make everything community led. So the way we will approach Igloolik is different from the way we'll approach Baker Lake is different from the way we'll approach Cambridge Bay. Um, so we approach we approach a community and ask like basically we can because of our funding we can offer this program for free. Um, how do you want us and when do you want us and what works? And so the community finds a way for us to, f uh, you know, to fit us in as opposed to us trying to fit in um, and kind of barge in. And so that's that's kind of the process that we go through. And so uh, enrollment is also community led. So we sometimes will work with schools, we'll sometimes work with youth centers, we'll sometimes just work with the Hamlet um, and, and 
you know, the communities know best what's going to work for them and what's going to draw the biggest crowds. And so they, they help us with that part and, and, and run kind of the way that it will work in that community. Uh, um, the yeah. feedback has been consistently positive. I think like we're one of the only groups like it's not offered in the school system at this point. So we're one of the only groups touching on tech education and kind of making these types of things available. Um, in terms of the, the participants, um, and I think probably the best example of, of seeing a difference is kind of that whole life cycle idea of just, we have had participants go from um, students to to interns to full-time staff to now releasing their their first uh, games. And so that's a big part of what we've, we've done and we've seen kind of that process happening. It's not something that's gonna happen overnight. It's not something that's gonna happen with every day, but the more we create kind of infrastructure places like this makerspace, then the more just that constant support is there and, and that'll ideally. See more. Um, cost of travel is a big challenge, um, which is unavoidable. Um, and again, fortunately, we've been supported to address that cost of, of travel. Um, probably the biggest challenges are around internet access and really just all digital access for, for kids. So, um, you know, not all houses are the same. And so some kids don't have uh don't have computers at their home and some kids don't have internet at their home. So kind of creating a universal playing field and the free laptops have allowed us to do that. Uh, we have sponsorship through Kinnick. So as we go into communities, we're able to offer internet access. Um, uh, it's, it's allowed those things to, to happen at the same time we develop our, our program to run entirely, um, without the need for internet. So we so. try to use all what's called open source software. And so open source software, doesn't cost anything. Um, it's often kind of community built uh, software. So that way we're not giving someone like, you know, Microsoft Word and then when Microsoft Word expires, they've got to pay $400 for it. Um, everything on that computer should work and work forever. Um, you'll have everything from like a word processor through something called LibreOffice to different art development programs. We use like a uh, whole bunch of different things. We have like um, a main art program that's kind of like Photoshop called GIMP. We have uh, uh, something for pixel art that we teach called graphic scale. We have lots of different programming languages, 3D modeling engines, that type of thing. So um, kind of everything we teach this hypothetical six and 11 year old um, in that one week session, they will have on their computer ready to continue building on. Okay. It's, I think like one of the major focuses and one of the most important things, just in the sense of like, again, back to that sustainability thing. If we just go in for a week and we teach people and then leave the like that week is, is one of 52 in a year and, and, and it's nothing. Um, and so building the skills to continue what we're doing, um, is kind of priority number one. And when we first get on the ground, that's what we do, right? We do the train, the trainer component and, and that's the mm -hmm. piece there. We're trying to create a, an extremely unique curriculum for computer science in that it is indigenous led and specific and really Nunavut led um, and in and created unique to the world of tech. And so um, in terms of what indigenous education looks like, in contrast to like the way a Western education may approach the same thing, um, we have uh, a majority Inuit curriculum developers. Um, even if, when, when we have someone who's not an uh, uh, indigenous curriculum developer, we have collaborations developed where people will work with people who may not have the technical skills, but have the cultural knowledge, um, can, can touch base with people with technical skills and combine them to make, create things. And so we've created really unique pieces of education. And I think that's really important for what we're doing. I think it's what, it's kind of the underlying goal of what we're doing. Um, this, you know, ideally looks in the future like a, a, a completely kind of Ideally, like primarily Inuit-led um, piece of unique computer science curriculum, and so um, you know it's it's unique in our organization. We're fairly big now, but um, we we have I think at this point majority Indigenous staff, um, and and you know, but at the, at, in my in my role as a non-Indigenous person, that's kind of like part of that process, and so um, we you know we are we are approaching the the uh, curriculum development process in a unique way and kind of allowing um, our, our collaborations and our indigenous staff to lead that process and what that looks like. Um, I know there is, there's kind of the question around like, what does it look like in contrast to Western education? Um, you know, I think it's, it's more family led. It's more, it's more holistically approached. It's, it's less about kind of like grade based outcomes as it is about kind of 
um, exposure to to skills and and kind of finding someone's niche. And so um, that's that's been what we've been focused so on. All one hundred pieces of our curriculum will be translated into an institute, um, and that process has started. Um, we're also actually because we're starting to go to Cree communities now in Northern Ontario. We're looking at trying to find a way to translate stuff into Cree. Um, but our curriculum is is largely Nunu written and Nunu based, and so we have pieces around like uh, throat singing, and we have pieces around um, kind of books that you know books and art that come out of Nunavut and uh, and exploring those those further. And so language is a huge part of that, um, and and kind of is reinforced by our existing language apps. And so that's that's kind of the idea. I guess a bunch of different things. One, uh, and I did mention this before, but like one of my goals with this is to actually have like the school system itself uh, offer this. And so our sustainability comes through the actual school system. And so incorporating this curriculum into school from K all the way to 12, making it available in the institute, making it available with like qualified teachers who can who can kind of foster um uh, tech curiosity and that, that type of thing. And so um, in terms of the goals for the program, like kind of continued growth of the curriculum, having that primarily indigenously desi indigenous design, indigenous led, um, and, and just like continuing to spread it out, like, excuse me, even beyond Nunavut to, to spread it to Nunavik, to, um, to Labrador and, and places like that. And so, um, yeah, just continuing to have it grow and to continue growing it in a way that is unique for, um, for tech education and for computer science.